our Heavenly Father, the fount of all goodness and grace, the cause of wisdom, the source of intelligence, we welcome you, O Lord, to this auspicious gathering of your beloved, who continuously give you thanks for every opportunity to learn something new and become fruitful to the works of your creation. We humbly come to you, not because we are worthy, but because we find ourselves in need of you, who is our strength and our hope, to continue despite the challenges we face in health, prosperity, and our solidarity with one another. We pray that today's gathering made possible by the grace of advancements in technology and social media become successful in its endeavors so we can offer it back to you as our humble offering to honor you, glorify you, and love you through our deeper connection with everyone. May we find bliss in today's session and become more productive children and co-creators of the earth. This we ask and pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Once again, this is John Ceballos of University of Cebu School of Law, and we are on our third episode for the month-long series of our mental preparation going to the Bar of Filipinas 2021. Joining me this afternoon is no other than Attorney Judy Lardizabal, who would be speaking for practical tips we can use for the bar examinations. And of course, for sophomores like you, law students like me, wherein we can use this in our practical exams in law school. So if you are joining in our official Facebook page, don't forget to like, share this video so all of us, the bar ops, the bar takers, the baristas, and everyone in the law society would know about this event. This event is brought to you by PALS and REX. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, I'd like to check on our audience here. We have, wow, we have like 200 plus audience. So to our friends in Manila, magandang hapon po sa inyo. In Cebu, maayong hapon kayong tanaw. And in Binanao, good afternoon. As we begin this afternoon's program, I'd like to invite everyone. We still have this event every Monday up until to the bar operations. Now. As we go along, I am quite excited to invite to you. This event is called Oo Sasagutin Nakita. I'd like to acknowledge the presence of our teams who are joining us this afternoon. We also have your Dean this team and the organizing uh, event of Paz and Rex. The reason for the event is we want to help the bar takers. This year's bar is already daunting as it is given the incorporation of new guidelines and technology during the bar examinations. This event from August to October 8th or uh, August to October during the Bar Ops Filipinas 2021 are all for the baristas. Takeaways from the previous episodes and insights about getting to know our bar examinations right away are provided in our Facebook page. To officially welcome this event proper, I'd like to give the floor to no other than the president of PALS Philippine Association of Law Schools and the Dean of PUP College of Law, Dean Testing. Uh, thank you, Jen. Uh, law students, professors, law school deans, and of course, dear baristas, 
Welcome to the last webinar for the month of August. Oo na, sasagutin na kita. For the first round of Bar Ops Pilipinas 2021, we heard from the notable law school deans and were inspired by the experiences they shared in taking the bar. You heard the answer to this uh, controversial question. Ano ba talaga? Bar muna? Bago jowa? And on the second run, Attorney Metoy emphasized the need to maintain a healthy mind despite the pressure of preparing for the bar. Now for the last event for the month of August, you're about to learn one of the most important skills in taking the bar, the skill of answering bar questions. And what better way to learn it than to hear it from the best. So participants, uh, listen well and observe all that you can especially now that everyone can be an exemplary for this year's uh, bar exam and learn from today's guest. Uh, once again, good afternoon and welcome to Bar Ops Pilipinas. Oo na, sasagutin na kita, tips on answering bar questions. And before that, just remember, no, if you stay close to God, you stay closer to your dream, the dream that He planted in your hearts. God bless. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dean Christine. And also would like to thank our sponsor for this event, Rex Bookstore. Thank you so much for partnering with us for making this event possible. This event is brought to you by the Philippine Association of Law Schools in collaboration with Rex Education and Edo Campion. Edo Campion is Rex Education's philosophy and invitation to everyone join together to develop initiatives with the best interest of the Filipino learner in mind and in heart. Rex Education has been working and partnering with experts to create the roadmap for everyone to champion legal education. Learn more about our official partner for Bar Ops Filipinas 2020-2021 Best Bar Ever webinar series and watch this video. It is a noble aspiration to want to dedicate one's life in service of those who are oppressed and defenseless against the unfair and the unjust. It is an admirable advocacy in an adult, but it is awe-inspiring for a child to dream of speaking for those who are voiceless, to stand up in defense of the law and the common good. Because while every child dreams of a future, not every child is like you, who dreams of shifting society and changing the world. But life brings many possibilities. You may have chosen to push through the roadmap to your goal, or you may have changed your priorities, opted to explore, preferred to discover the world, or work on yourself first before moving towards your dream. Regardless, what's destined for you will always call you back. A dream deferred is not always a dream denied. Rex Education helps in building that dream every step of the way. For seven decades, legal education has been at the heart of Rex Education, providing learners and practitioners with market-leading materials covering every discipline of law. Rex Education has become a standard in textbooks at every stage of a learner's journey, and it shows through the 70 years of being the most preferred by students, authors, professors, and thought leaders. Estudyante pa lang ako, 1990. Yung mga professor, ang piniprescribe nila, yung mga law books, eh, ang publisher, Rex Publishing. So at that time na nag I, uh, nagsulat ako ng book. So I, I decided to let Rex Publishing to publish my book. Bilang isang author ng law books, napaka-importante sa akin na yung mga librong sinulat ko accessible sa mga estudyante. Ang Rex Bookstore kasi napakarami, napakaraming branches niyan eh. Hanggang Mindanao meron silang mga branches at napakarami nilang ahente na personal na pumupunta sa mga eskwelahan para may offer nung libro ko. Pati na rin yung mga libro ng mga ibang authors 
So yun ang nakikita kong dahilan. Kaya uh, ako, pati na yung mga ibang authors ng law books, nagtitiwala sa Rex Publishing. Rex Materials helped me in reviewing for the bar exam. Most of the books that I used in law school were published by Rex. And I practically used the same old law books during the bar review as they were complete and comprehensive. Being then a working student, it was financially hard to buy new books. Good thing Rex offered these law books at an affordable price. Also, the books published by Rex are known for their quality. The law books that I purchased from Rex and those that I borrowed from the school library, mostly published by Rex, became my strong armor, weapon, and constant companion as I hurdled the challenging life in law school. It is an honor to become part of Rex's family, and I am proud and happy to be with the best publisher in legal education. Being engaged in the education and training of future lawyers, the areas that are important to me when publishing books are excellence in the output and the commitment of the publisher in publishing materials for the improvement of the student's quality of education. It's for these reasons that I trust Rex as a publisher. With its more than 70 years of commitment to advance the quality of education of Filipino students, I am at ease in partnering with an institution who has the same level of desire for excellence as I do. From my years of partnering with Rex, I've experienced nothing but immense support, especially in working towards publishing books that are correct and precise. So in this regard, I trust the learning materials that are published by Rex because of its rigorous process not only in proofreading, but also in ensuring quality. Rex Education implements an uncompromised editorial process to ensure quality content. In fact, Rex Education Law Books have received numerous book centenary awards by the Supreme Court. Because legal education is continuously evolving, Rex Education continuously innovates in legal education. There have been challenges, but Filipinos have always risen above, and we are thankful for the support. Rex Education's legacy in championing lifelong learning continues, despite the changes in the landscape of legal education. And because we recognize those changes, Rex Education is able to provide the appropriate solution. Rex Education digital products and online platforms made our learning materials more accessible to the learners, which enabled them to have a better grasp of their dreams of becoming a lawyer. For you who's taking the leap, Rex Education has Prelex in preparation for law school admission exam. For you who's uncertain but keeps on striving because your dream is not yours only but of your family and the society. No matter the challenges, you move forward because every minute means a hundred words read. Rex Education has reliable textbooks and codals that you can depend on in your study of law. For you who's a step closer to your dream and is excited to bring pride to your family, Rex Education has bar reviewers to gear you up for your review subjects and help you pass the bar. For you, who's braving new beginnings, Rex Education has instructive books and learning solutions for new and seasoned lawyers. And for you who's in the forefront of shaping today's finest lawyers, no more second guessing. Publish your book and depend on Rex Education for editorial, project management, promotion, and distribution. Whether it be education, practice, or profession, let Rex Education help you be the best that you can be. 
everything that we do is dedicated to helping you succeed because we value you. And your dream of becoming a lawyer and excelling as one. Not just for the past 70 years, but also for the following generations to come. Rex Education will be... bookstore for making this event possible again for those who just joined us this afternoon this event is oh, oh sasagutin na kita this is our third episode for our month-long mental preparation as we take on the part of spiritinas 2021 now as you can remember in our first episode we had a, a very clever question about um we asked few deans if it is an assurance that if we pass the bar then we will get a joa so i can still remember how the deans reacted to that so if you want to know the answer find out by looking on our official facebook page now this event is oo na sasagutin na kita because we will be discussing on practical tips as long as uh, we have the ALAC method, but it has been transformed to a different method, wherein we will be talking about how we will tackle different questions going to the bar. And also this type of answering the practical tips, we can also apply this for us, my fellow law students in our law school. Without any further ado, I would like to introduce this afternoon's speaker. Now... This afternoon's speaker is 2008 Bar Top Notcher, Top 1, ranked number 3 at the 2002 Board Examinations for the Social Workers, Litigation Lawyer for GSIS, and Associate of Solicitor Number 3 of the Office of Solicitor General. Law students, baristas, Everyone, Law Society, help me welcome no other than D. Attorney Judy Lardizabal. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much, John, for the introduction. It's uh, an honor to be uh, here and to lecture on practical tips in answering the 2020-2021 bar examination questions. Uh, may I share my slides now, John? Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Well, I have uh, uh, lectured on this topic previously, okay? but this time uh, the presentation um, is different because I have included the recent issue ones of uh, Justice Leonin regarding the possible or the expected questions in this uh, best bar ever 2020-2021. So unlike the previous bar examinations, he said that uh, the questions in the upcoming bar examination will be straightforward questions uh, requiring straightforward answers. Yeah, for those who are you know, overwhelmed by um, the need, uh, marami nag-iisip, kailangan ba nilang baguhin yung manner of answering nila? Because I know you have uh, trained yourselves in answering questions using the ALAC method. <laughs> Kasi yung mga nagbabasa ng Twitter, I, I know you've seen one who tried to answer the question posted by Justice Leonin, and Justice Leonin uh, made comments on such uh, 
uh, sample um, or answer uh, provided by one of uh, uh, um, a Twitter user. So I will also be presenting those. Okay. So sa simula pa lang, I just want you to uh, uh, know that there's nothing to worry about. If you've been trained to use the ALAC method, you can still use the ALAC method in answering questions this coming 2020-2021 bar examinations. Just as Yonan just wanted, okay, the exam needs to be more straightforward in answering. So if you can limit the words, if you can make simple sentences, uh, it's better uh, for him. So in the recent issue once, uh, Justice Yonan also provided his sample Okay, suggested answers so that uh, the same can be used as reference by those who will be taking the bar examinations. Well, those are now included in this uh, presentation for the guidance of everyone. Okay, so nakalagay dyan first case or 2008 bar examination. So uh, history na lang kami ngayon because this time the Supreme Court have decided to forgo the usual top 10, uh, yung list of top notchers. But it's okay. Uh, tama naman yan. It's uh, one of uh, the reforms that they have adopted pro hoc vice. So meaning, uh, well, for this bar examinations, but it doesn't prevent uh, the future uh, chair and uh, panel or the Supreme Court to adopt the same okay, policy in the uh, in future bar examinations. Okay, let's start. Uh, so the title of this uh, um, lecture is Oo na, sasagutin na kita. Because in order to pass the bar examinations, you must provide an answer. Kasi kung wala kong sagot, Eh, zero yan. So later, we, I will also be discussing the grading system that will be uh, followed or observed by the examiners in this best bar ever. Okay. So um, Justice Diona has been very vocal about this 2020-2021 uh, bar examinations as the best bar exam ever. Okay. I guess uh, you should take that as uh, an encouragement to continue with your plan to take the bar examination this year. Okay? Kaya best bar ever yan. Well, in encourage na kayo na mag-take na ng bar examination maybe because this is your time. Huh? According to him, this will be a very inclusive okay? uh, bar examination. Tinanggal na yung mga problem regarding handwriting. Ginawa na siyang digitalize. So gagamit na lang kayo ng computer because... Uh, uh, nire recognize na yung handwriting kasi is one of the factors uh, that uh, affected the scoring or the scores given by the examiners. So this time, sabi ni Justice Tionan, wala na yan. Uh, best bar ever. And according to him, uh, in his latest uh, bar bulletin, okay, bar bulletin number 25, Okay, bar bulletin number 25 was issued um, days ago, that's August 26, okay, this contains instructions to the bar examiners, and nandito kasi yung grading system, an explanation on the computation of scores in the 2020-2021 bar examination. This bulletin also provided sample questions that uh, may be expected in this coming bar examinations and the suggested answers or the manner of how answers should be written. Uh, in order to merit the full point of five, uh, full uh, points. Okay, anong full points dito? Uh, according to Justice Dionin, each question uh, can merit five points. No, so para makuha mo yung five points na yon, uh, nandito rin yung mga sample uh, format of answers that are uh, that may be credited five points. The court explained in this bar bulletin uh, that uh, these modifications are adopted pro hoc vice. So for this bar examinations only, uh, without prejudice to the possible adoption of the same uh, reforms in future bar examinations. Okay? So the um, reason behind that is uh, to have a more equitable approach in appraising and reporting bar examination performance. Uh, so they recognize the need for this reform since there will be uh, a num uh, dito, more than the usual uh, number of examinees will be taking the bar examinations. Kasi yung mga kukuha dapat 2020, 
ha, na delay yan and uh, i-add pa sila dito sa mga kukuha ngayong 2021. So times two yung number of examinees that will be taking the bar examinations. And because of the number of examinees, so may hihirapan din yung mga bar examiners to check their answers. So sabi niya, hindi naman yan yung typical na classroom lang that there are 40 students or even less, maximum of less than 100, that the professor will be checking. Hindi ganun. Uh, since there will be thousands of examinees, then uh, uh, the, the, these modifications are adopted in order to ensure that uh, the answers of the examinees will be apprised uh, equitably and the reporting will, will focus on the performance of law schools, not on the performance of individual examinees. Uh, in my previous lectures, I've been emphasizing that bar examination is not a competition. You are not actually competing with the other examinees. So it's about uh, your performance. Well, you will be graded based on your performance. If you deserve to pass the bar examinations, then that will be uh, determined by your answers uh, in the bar questions, hindi dun sa performance ng iba. So this time, the court emphasized on that the focus will be the performance of law schools and not individual performance of the examinees. Also, the court uh, considered the situation of the examinees, those who have, uh, have been forced or compelled to postpone taking the bar examination given the pandemic, those who are struggling financially because of the pandemic, uh, and those who um, are, most of them are still facing uncertainty as to what will happen uh, when they take the bar examination. Because uh, this will be a month long examination. And while preparing, uh, these uh, examinees are actually stressed out, no? And dami lang iniisip. Hindi lang. Because hindi lang yung bar examination, iniisip nila yung family nila. And given the pandemic, they don't know. Huh? Everything is uncertain. So the court said uh, these modifications are meant to address uh, the situation of the examinees. Also, uh, these reforms intend to address debilities and inequities. So number one, John, yung handwriting. That's why they... Uh, um, they adopted a digitalized bar examination to avoid this. Okay. That was, uh, this uh, reform was also initiated uh, to address the false tendency to associate bar examination performance with overall legal acumen. The court said that bar exam performance should not be the barometer of uh, how this uh, lawyer will perform in his uh, 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 exercise or uh, profession of his or her profession. So, hindi dapat naka equip sa bar examination grade yung kanya magiging future in the legal profession because professional success will happen after passing the bar examination. So, the court said, yunya. So, these reforms are intended to address that false perception as regards being a good lawyer. Eh? It should not be equated or uh, the bar examination grade should not become the barometer of uh, an individual's success in the legal profession. So this time, since wala nang top-notchers, ay hindi naman masama sa loob sa, kung nawala nang top-notchers. In fact, uh, okay lang yan. Okay? Uh, this time, ang, ipopla, uh, ang, ang focus would be, uh, well, everyone passing, passing grade of 75, those who will get a grade of 85 and higher, they will still be um, recognized for exemplary performance. Exemplary performance. So, uh, and the court said that the listing of uh, those who got a score of 85 and above will be in an alphabetical order. So, para ma-avoid din yung ranking. So, exemplary together. Everyone who got a grade of 85 and above will be recognized uh, for exemplary performance, but their names will be listed in an alphabetical order. 
the court also emphasized that the purpose of bar examination is to determine whether the examinee has a minimum knowledge of the law to become a lawyer. This is about checking if he has the minimum. So ano yung minimum? At least 75%. So substantial knowledge of the law, substantial, uh, just enough skill to become a lawyer. So to determine whether the examinee has minimum knowledge to become a lawyer. And as to how many questions should you expect? Uh, in this uh, bar bulletin, the court said that there will only be a total of 15 to 18 questions. So take note, in your law school, I'm sure every examination consists of not less than 20 questions, with each question having five points, diba? Pero dito sa bar examination, uh, ang sabi ni Justice Leon, and there will only be 15 to 18 straightforward questions. So, dapat uh, matuwa tayo dito. Kasi kung 15 to 18 questions lang yan, with no sub-questions, and you are all still given the same time allocation to finish the examination, eh sobra-sobra ang oras nyo para sagutin yung 15 to 18 straightforward questions. And take note, yung term talaga ngayon sa bar exam, straightforward. Na, straightforward. So pag sinabing straightforward, walang palabok. Na, wala rin yung mga irrelevant facts. Na, straightforward questions uh, requiring straightforward answers. So para sa mga nahihirapang mag-spot ng issue, so dapat mag-celebrate kayo ngayon. Kasi if the questions are straightforward, then there's no need to spot it. Presented na yung issue sa question. All you have to do is answer answer the straightforward question, okay? So these straightforward questions are designed to address entry-level legal competency. So kung entry-level legal competency, you can expect that the questions will be coming from basic provisions of law that every lawyer must know huh? or every individual must know be before uh, being admitted to the legal profession. So. Uh, kung totoo to, I'm sure naman uh, Justice Leonan will be true to his words. No? 15 to 18 straightforward questions with no sub-questions, hindi na dapat kayo kabahan sa pag-take ng bar examinations. Uh, kasi I'm sure yung preparation nyo ay more than enough uh, to get the qualifying grade of 75. Answers to each que question can earn up to 5 points. So, hindi na rin kayo mag-iisip kung paano nyo i-manage um, uh, yung time to finish the, this examination. Kasi 15 to 18 questions, 5 points each. Alam nyo na rin kung ano yung points na pwede ma-earn ng kada sagot nyo. 5 points each. Unlike the previous bar examinations, nakita nyo na naka-divide naka yung mga Percentage points, nakalagay 3%, 1%, 7%. This time, you know that each answer that you can you will give in this bar examination can earn up to 5 points. So, if there are 15 questions, take note that 15 to 18, hindi nga 15 to 20, 15 to 18. So, if there are 15 questions, the maximum possible score will be 75 points. Uh, for an exam consisting of 15 questions. Uh, at yung 75 na yan, hindi pa yan yung raw score percentage. So 75 out, ay 72, for example, you got a grade, a score of 72, okay? Your raw score percentage will be 72 over 75. So ano yung 72 over 75? That is 96%. 96% of 75 points. So 72 over 75. So kung nakascore ka ng 96% sa subject na yan, that 96% will be further multiplied by the bar subject's relative weight. So kung remedial law ang pinag-uusapan natin, ah, 72 points kasi 15 questions, there are 
15 questions, five points each. So 75 points ang perfect score. Naka 72 ka. 72 over 75 is 96 percent. Yang 96 percent will be further multiplied by the weight by the bar subject's relative weight. So 20 percent ang remedial law. So 96 percent times 20. Your weighted score for remedial law will be 19.20. So the same with other bar subjects. Okay. The relative weights of bar subjects has not been changed by the Supreme Court. So kung ano pa rin yung nasa Rule 138, Section 14, the same relative weights are given to each of the uh, bar examination subjects. So ang binigay na example, so remedial law, still 20%, political law, 15%, civil law, 15%, commercial law, 15%, labor law and social legislation, 10%, criminal law, 10%, taxation, 10%, and legal ethics, 5%. Total percentage, 100%. Okay. So kung dito kanina, nakascore siya na 96 sa remedial law, the weighted score will be 19.20. So the total weighted score for the 2020-2021 bar examination is the sum of all weighted scores per subject. The sum of all weighted scores per subject. Now in the bar bulletin, the, okay, the court gave an example on how to compute the total weighted score. Okay, so ito mga raw scores na to, okay, this raw scores are all under the assumption that the examination consists of 15 questions with five points each. So ang total uh, scores, uh, perfect score will be 75. Okay. So remedial law, ang raw score is 72. 72 over 75 is 96. Relative weight, 20%. Weighted score, 19.20. Political and international law, say for example, the examinee okay, got 70 points, 70 over 75. His percentage score will be 93.33. Multiplied by a relative weight of political law, which is 15%, the weighted score will be 14%. Civil law, uh, if the examinee got a score of 60, 60 over 75. So meron siyang mali na 15. Huh? The raw score percentage is 80%. Multiplied by the relative weight of 15%. For civil law, the weighted score is 12%. Commercial law, a raw score 63 over 75. Raw score percentage is 84% multiplied by the relative weight of 15%, then the weighted score for commercial law will be 12.60%. Labor law and social legislation, medyo nahirapan sa labor law and social legislation, 57 over 75. Raw score is 76%, relative weight of 10%, the weighted score will be 7.60. Criminal law, 64 ang naging score niya, 64 over 75. The raw score percentage is 85.33. Multiplied by the relative weight of 10%, then the weighted score is 8.53. For taxation, nahirapan sa taxation, 52, 52 over 75. The raw score percentage is 69.33. Multiplied by the relative weight of 10%, then the weighted score is 6.93%. Then lastly, for legal ethics, ah, na, nadalian ng konti sa legal ethics, lima lang ang mali, 70 over 75. Raw score percentage is 93.33, multiplied by 5% relative weight, the weighted score is 4.63. Then, ito na ang total weighted score to determine if the examinee was able to meet the minimum uh, score of 75%. So, ia-add lahat ng relative scores per subject. 
uh, ang total score ng exam nito is eighty five point fifty three. Mm -hmm. 85.53, mas mataas sa 75. At this examinee will also be considered for exemplary performance dahil ang score niya is eight, more than 85. Kasi those who will get a score of 85 and above will be recognized for exemplary performance. So mapapansin nyo, ha? Uh, hindi 100 points, ha? your examination. 15 to 18 questions with 5 points each. Tapos yung raw score, ah, kukunin pa doon yung percentage based on the maximum score that may be obtained. Kaya dito kung ang maximum score that may be obtained is 75, 72 over 75. So the score is actually 96%. To successfully pass, uh, the examinee's total weighted score across all bar subjects must be at least 75% computed in accordance with the relative weight per subject. A total weighted score below 75% will mean that the examinee has not passed the bar examination. Okay? So total weighted score is the sum of the weighted scores per subject. Ito yun. This is the total weighted score. Kaya nga sa taxation, 69 lang siya, but it's okay. What will matter is the total weighted score. Passing score is 75%. Those who will score 85 and above, they will be considered for exemplary performance. Below 74 will be a failing grade, okay? but the court also reserved the discretion to lower the passing percentage depending upon the outcome of the examination. Pero sa ngayon, ang passing percentage would be 75%. The Supreme Court shall make the list of passers publicly available, okay? and they will also provide the list of passers and the ranking of law schools. And the examinees will also receive an email from the court informing them if they passed with exemplary performance, they merely passed or did not pass. Okay. Uh, also in the bar bulletin, the court said that the list of passers will be in alphabetical order. Those who ob obtain grades of 85 and above will also be flashed uh, and publicly made available, but their names will be listed in al alphabetical order. There will only be one disqualifier according to the bar bulletin. When an examinee violates the honor code or has committed serious misconduct in relation to the bar examinations. So very clear, huh? there is only one disqualifier, the violation of the honor code or the commission of serious misconduct in relation to bar examinations. The honor code has been included in bar bulletin number 18. Ito yung honor code. So if an examinee violates this honor code, then he or she will be disqualified. Yan lang ang disqualifier in this 2020-2021 bar exam. I acknowledge that the lawyer's oath shall be applicable to me from the time I apply to become a lawyer. On my honor, I declare that I have not done and will not do any act that can be construed as cheating by the bar chairperson or by the Supreme Court. Likewise, I commit not to aid or tolerate anyone who commits or attempts to commit any form of cheating before, during, and after the bar examinations. I commit to report and stand as a witness to any act of dishonesty employed in the bar examinations. Any failure on my part to comply with these commitments may constitute grounds for my permanent disqualification from this and any future bar examinations. That is the honor code. So basically, this is a code against cheating. Uh, so cheating, uh, attempt to abet or assist in the commission of cheating, uh, at saka yung uh, meron dito commitment to report uh, and stand as a witness uh, to any forms of dishonesty during the bar examinations. Grading system. 
how will the examiners grade your answers? Okay, this is uh, a new uh, uh, policy eh? in um, grading answers in bar examinations. So we don't know if this policy will be applied in the future, pero I think there is a huge possibility uh, na ma-apply din to in future bar examinations depende kung ano yung magiging resulta uh, ng examination this year. Ako, I do uh, um, believe that with this grading system, maraming papasa. Okay? Maraming papasa. Why? The Supreme Court provided for a standard grading system, uh, which will be uh, used as guideline by examiners in grading the answers. Okay? So answers to each question can earn up to five points. So alam na na ang bawat sagot sa exam, uh, consisting of 15 to 18 questions, ay pwedeng bigyan ng maximum points na five points. No partial point shall be given. So, walang 2.5, 3.5, 4.5. Okay? So, 1 to 5 lang ang pinag-uusapan natin dito. Answer shall be graded according to a tired qualitative system. Ano ba to yung tired qualitative system? Okay? The court provided for um, guidelines on when an, an answer will merit one point, Two points, three points, four points, or five points. A grade of five shall be earned by an answer that in relation to the data and or situations presented by a question presents the correct legal conclusion and is supported by correct legal basis and is delivered in a complete but succinct, clear, and polished manner with minimal errors in grammar. Hindi kailangan perfect ang grammar. The court even, ah, ah, tawag dito, ah, accommodates ah, possible minimal errors in grammar. Pero kahit meron ganyan, wag naman kayo magkaroon ng mga unforgivable grammatical errors because uh, uh, effective communication skills is necessary as well to be uh, an effective uh, lawyer. Ah, because you will be addressing the court, you'll be communicating with the court to your pleadings, and uh, when appearing before the court, you have also to speak in English. So, kailangan din makita na polish yung communications nyo. Okay? An answer with correct conclusion, correct legal basis, and presented uh, in a complete clear, succinct, and polished manner with minimal errors in grammar will merit five points. So, kung tama yung sagot mo, maayos. Ha? So, ang sagot mo tama, supported by tamang legal basis, at yung presentation mo is clear, eh, minimal in errors in grammar, then you will get that answer if you will get five points. Four points. Correct legal conclusion with correct legal basis, but there are flaws in communication. So, ibig sabihin tong flaws in communication, hindi na minimal errors in grammar. Tama naman yung sagot, tama yung legal basis, pero may problema in communication. Eh, the court, uh, uh, yung mga, ang score is four. Uh, score is four. So it's really about substance. No? And nagkaroon lang ng one point deduction for flaws in communication. Three. Three shall be earned by an answer that presents the correct legal conclusion, but uh, the legal basis is incorrect. Or even if there is a correct legal basis, the answer simultaneously invokes other incorrect inapplicable or inappropriate legal basis. So, ano, anong reason dito? May alam naman siya sa batas. Eh, ah, tama sana yung sagot niya, mali lang yung legal basis niya. Or tama yung sagot niya, may tamang legal basis siya, pero dinagdagan pa niya ng other legal basis na hindi naman tama. Ah, inappropriate or inapplicable. Okay. 
ang score 3. Why? May substantive knowledge of the law. May substantial knowledge of the law. Yung batang ito. Uh, it just so happened that uh, the, the, the examining might be confused. Okay? <laughs> Uh, kasi tama na yung legal bill, sinamaan pa ng mga inapplicable legal provision. Or tama naman yung sagot, pero hindi sakto yung legal basis niya. Score is 3. Ano naman yung 2? Uh, incorrect answer. Incorrect legal conclusion. Although in discussing the legal basis, the examinee exhibits a capacity to effective, for effective legal reasoning and communication such as through coherent and cogent formulation of answers and adequate reference to legal authorities. So take note, mali yung sagot, pero may two points pa rin uh, kasi may ability to effectively uh, communicate and reason out legally okay, through coherent and co cogent formulation of answers with adequate reference to legal authorities. So, ito yung mga, ito yung score ng mga answers na hindi mo maisip talaga ano ba yung legal basis but you provide other possible legal basis. Uh, and try to uh, provide a logical answer. Okay. So, score is 2. Ano naman yung 1? Incorrect legal conclusion Inability to reason and com communicate effectively, but there is a bona fide attempt on the part of the examinee to deliver an answer befitting the question. Ano tong one point for the effort? Mali yung sagot, masama ang grammar, but there is a bona fide attempt to provide uh, an answer. Uh, required by the question. Okay. For the effort, uh, the examinee will be given one point. Zero. Zero if there's no answer. Or uh, when the examinee places information or text in the space, but it is gibberish, irrelevant, or nonsensical. Okay. In one, a uh, lecture, Justice Leonen, as an example, ah, ang binigay niya example, ang, ang answer nung exam, nung, nung exam ni ay, it depends upon Liza Soberano. Okay. It's nonsensical. It's irrelevant. Okay. So that answer will merit zero. Okay. So, kaya nga kahit mahirap yung tanong or hindi mo alam ang sagot sa tanong, provide an answer. Because if there's no answer, huh, space for answer is blank, then there will be no corresponding point. Or kung nalagay ka doon, instead of uh, writing a responsive answer, okay, using any possible legal basis that you can think of, naglagay ka ng prayer doon, or naglagay ka ng plea to the examiner, that will get zero. So kung mapapansin nyo with this grading system, basta may effort ka, may alam ka sa batas, you can communicate your answers effectively. Ah, makakakuha ka ng 5, ng 4, ng 3, ng 2, ng 1. Kung wala ka talaga na ibibigay, then that's the time na makukuha mo ang zero. The court summarized the grading system in the bar bulletin. Uh, grade of five, legal conclusion is correct. Legal basis is correct. But language or style, the examinee delivered in a complete, succinct, clear, and polished manner with minimal errors in grammar. Grade of four, legal conclusion is correct. Legal basis is correct. As to language or style, the examinee delivered the answer with flaws in ability to communicate. So may mga flaws in grammar. Grade of three, legal conclusion is correct. Legal basis is incorrect. Or even though it provided a correct legal basis, it simultaneously, the examinee simultaneously okay, asserted an incorrect legal basis, inapplicable or inappropriate legal basis. Grade of two, legal conclusion is incorrect. Legal basis is likewise incorrect. 
Okay? The examinee exhibits capacity for effective legal reasoning and communication through coherent and cogent formulation of answers and adequate reference to legal authority. Grade of one, legal conclusion is incorrect. Well, legal basis is also incorrect, but the examinee de demonstrates uh, uh, bona fide attempt to deliver an answer befitting the question. And so, mali yung sagot, pero may kita ka, nag-effort naman siya to respond to the question. Kahit mali yan, may one point. And zero, there's no answer given. The examinee lacks a genuine attempt to answer right gibberish irrelevant or nonsensical text. I'm sure some of your professors before in law school are already observing this manner of grading system. Okay? So for the effort, they will still give the, the student uh, some points. Okay? May sense naman yung sagot, mali lang talaga, okay? may points pa rin. Okay? Tama yung sagot, hindi sakto yung legal basis, may points pa rin. Okay? What is uh, quite assuring with this kind of grading system is that if you know something about the law and you can, you can communicate this effectively, clearly in your answers, then you will still get points. And take note, ah, uh, uh, ang expected questions lang ay 15 to 18 questions. 15 to 18 questions, no sub-questions. And for each question, you can get five points. Ang kailangan nyo lang, 75%. So how to answer? Okay, how to answer? What do you do? Okay. Do not forget. Okay. Law, language, logic. Tinanggal ko yung layout dito because this, uh, Justice Leonin has been emphasizing this point that the focus will be on the substance and not on form. Okay? Uh, not on form. So it's about substance. Okay? Pero as to matter of presentation, dun sa example niya, makikita niyo rin naman na halos alak pa rin naman yun. Huh? Answer, legal basis, application, conclusion. Pero simplified lang. Simplified lang kasi straightforward ang pagkakapresent. So law, this is very important. Hindi pwedeng sumugod kayo na walang legal basis because bar examination is a test of your knowledge of the law. Huh? Kailangan malaman kung pwede ka bang maging abogado. Kasi para, para maging abogado ka, you must show some expertise Ah, di ba? Kailangan may alam ka sa batas. So, law, your answer must have legal basis. Kaya nga doon sa grading system, kung tama ang legal basis mo, di ba? Five points. Hmm? Language. Okay. So, it's also important that you'll be, you'll be able to communicate your answers clearly without major grammatical errors. Kasi kung may grammatical error, flaw, flaw in communication, nakita nyo naman from five naging four because of flaws in communication. Pero kung maayos yung communication skills mo, kahit mali yung sagot mo, pwede ka pa rin magkaroon ng two points or three points. Diba? Logic. Eh? Logic is a required para hindi ka maging zero eh? or makakuha ka man lang ng one, two, or three because of good logic. For questions, According to Justice Leonin, ah, si Justice Leonin kasi very active to sa Twitter. Eh. Eh, sabi sa, ni Justice Leonin, bar questions will be straightforward, textual, canonical, testing basic knowledge. Bar exams test basic competence. It is not about competition. Answer should also be straightforward, clear, and concise. So ayaw ni Justice Leonin na mahabang sagot. <laughs> Sagutin mo lang yung tinatanong. Huwag kang maraming palabo. So yun yung basically gusto niyang sabihin. So questions are straightforward. Ah, walang mga irrelevant facts in the question. Kaya nga yung mga nahihirapang mag-spot ng issue, this is the bar examination for you. Kasi hindi ka na pahihirapang mag-spot ng issue since the question is straightforward. Ah, problem posing. Ando na mismo yung issue pinepresent na sa'yo, sagutin mo lang. Hindi ka na maghahanap pa ano ba dito ang relevant at irrelevant. Okay. The presentation will not matter. It is the substance of the answer that will matter. Bar test for basic knowledge, 
not style. Kaya nga, in the grading system, mapapansin nyo, okay? uh, ang focus talaga in giving uh, five points or four points will be the substance of the answer. Uh, it's not about the style according to Justice Leonin, the substance. Kung may alam ka sa batas, uh, kaya mong i-apply yan in answering the questions, then you will pass these bar examinations. Criminal law. Ito yung mga maraming sumagot dito kasi pinuos ni Justice Dionin to sa Twitter. Okay? Without permission, uh, example of a straightforward question. So straightforward. Hindi na kayo maghahanap ng relevant at irrelevant kasi nga very clear, straightforward. No? Without permission or consent, A took a pencil from his seatmate B. Later on, A returned it to B. Was theft committed? Explain briefly. Uh, so... Very clear yung tanong. Simple lang yung question. Walang masyadong ano, palabok. Ha? Hindi ka na maghahanap anong relevant at irrelevant. So, yan yung sample of straightforward question. Now, some, some Twitter users try to answer this. Okay? May isang sumagot. Ito si Kelong V. De Guzman. Yes, the crime of theft was committed. Under the revised penal code, theft is committed by any person who, with intent to gain, shall take the personal property of another without the latter's consent. Moreover, jurisprudence provides that intent to gain is presumed from the unlawful taking. Actual gain is irrelevant as the important consideration is the intent to gain. Here, A took the pencil of B without the latter's consent or permission. The fact that A returned to B is of no moment because actual gain is irrelevant as the important consideration is the intent to gain, which is presumed the moment A took the pencil of B without the latter's consent. Hence, theft was committed. Okay. And ngayon, uh, Justice Dionin commented on this uh, suggested answer of calling B. de Guzman. According to Justice Dionin, Second and third sentence, first paragraph is repetitive and may be skipped. Second sentence in second paragraph can be revised so that it is more direct, plain English. Third paragraph is surplusage. It can be substituted with yes under the revised penal code. Save time. By the way, whoever taught you to answer this way may not be the bar chair. Okay. Because of this post, uh, maraming na problema. So, mali ba yung manner of answering namin? Okay? Uh, mali ba yung natutunan namin sa law school na alak? Answer, legal basis, application, conclusion. Hindi naman mali. Okay? It just so happened that Justice Dionin wanted your answers to be straightforward and concise. Ayaw niya na maraming palabok. Ayaw niya ng sobrang, sobrang haba. Kung pwede mo namang sabihin ng 10 words or 5, 4 words, okay? Or 8 words, ba't kagagamit ng 20 words? Okay. So, try natin i-apply. So, basically, ang sabi ni Justice Dionin, etong second and third sentence sa first paragraph ay repetitive at pwede nang maskip. Ayan, yung moreover, sa kayang kulay green. Uh, repetitive na daw yan. Huwag na yan. Pwede nang skip yan. Tapos sabi din niya, the second sentence in second paragraph may be revised so that it is more direct, plain English. Third paragraph is a surplusage. Okay. So, ayan. Yung kulay blue, yan. Uh, pwedeng ma-revise. Tanggalin na lang daw yan. Eh? Tapos surplusage na daw tong last paragraph. Okay. So basically, anong gusto sabihin ni Justice Dionin? You can answer this using sentences only. Okay, ilang sentence? Three sentences. Okay. So hindi mo kailangan na sobrang haba. Okay. Pwede ka namang sumagot ng straightforward answer to the question. Ang question lang naman is, was theft committed? Now, in the bar bulletin, he provided... Uh, the suggested answer. Yes, all of the elements of crime of theft are present. So all of the elements of uh, theft have been enumerated. It's not an exempt or justifying circumstance to return the thing taken. From this suggested answer, mapapansin nyo, it's still alak. Wala lang yung conclusion. Uh, kasi yung conclusion, yun na rin yung nasa first sentence. 
Okay? So, you do away with that. Pwede namang na doon sa first sentence. The first sentence is the response to the question. Okay? Tapos followed by legal basis. Etong last sentence na dito, this is actually an application of the legal basis to the relevant facts. Pero hindi na kailangan ulitin pa yung facts. Okay? So, for him, you can respond to the question in three sentences only. Example of straightforward question uh, in legal ethics. X, a civil service eligible, filed a petition to apply as notary public, invoking as her sole credential her civil service eligibility. Should the petition be granted? Explain briefly. Okay. Kung ganito ang questions sa bar examinations, at 15 to 18 questions lang, without sub-questions, sub mapapansin nyo, maikli yung question. Uh, talagang itetest, uh, itetest lang yung kung may knowledge of the law kayo. Ganyan kaikli yung question, gusto rin ni Justice Tionen, maikli lang yung sagot mo. Huwag nyo nang habaan kung di naman kailangan yung mahaba. This is the suggested answer. No. Ah, no. There is no showing that petitioner satisfies all requirements to be eligible for commissioning as notary public, particularly that she is a member of the Philippine Bar. Thus, the petition should not be granted. According to Justice Leon, in an answer like this deserves five points. Five points na. Now, he further said, the following is an optional addition, although ultimately ineffectual, as the brief answer above already warrants the highest possible grade. O sabi niya, ba't mo pa ilalagay itong mga to? To be eligible for commissioning as notary public, the petitioner must be as follows. Okay. Sabi ni Justice Tion, kung sinama yan, it's okay pa rin naman. Ha? Pero hindi na kailangan kasi kung ang simple sagot na ganito ha? already deserves five points. Ha? There's no need to include all of the qualifications. Okay? So, kung sinabi yung sinama niyo yan, it's okay lang din naman, pero why spend time ha? providing for a list of qualifications if a simple answer like this uh, will already deserve five points. Another example of a straightforward question, Z filed a complaint for forcible entry against Y before the Regional Trial Court of Isabella. Can the Regional Trial Court dismiss the complaint for lack of jurisdiction? Explain briefly. Straightforward question. Uh, can the RTC dismiss the complaint for lack of jurisdiction? So, suggested answer. Yes, under the law. So, yes is a response to the question. Then the legal basis is under the law. Uh, metropolitan trial courts, municipal trial courts, and municipal circuit trial courts have exclusive jurisdiction over cases of forcible entry and unlawful detainer. Application. Here, the Regional Trial Court of Isabella has no jurisdiction over the complaint for forcible entry and can therefore dismiss it outright. Okay? So, what kayo mamublema if you train uh, to answer using the ALAC format? It's okay. Huh? In fact, you have ample time to make it more simple. Okay? Kasi kung mapapansin nyo itong sagot ni Jesus Yonan, I also follow the ALAC format. Wala lang yung letter C, the conclusion. The following is an optional addition, though ultimately ineffectual, as the brief answer above already warrants the highest possible grade. Uh, so sabi niya, pwedeng ganito rin. Being conferred by law, the issue of jurisdiction over the subject matter is one of the exceptional grounds where, where the court may dismiss a case. If it appears from the pleadings or evidence on record that this ground exists. Okay. So, sabi niya, palabok pa to, why? Uh, clear naman sa question that it is a complaint for forcible entry. Clear din sa question na ipinalito sa RTC. 
Uh, you can respond to the question by simply stating that the RTC does not have jurisdiction because forcible entry is within the exclusive jurisdiction of the MPC, MEPC, or MCPC. Okay, so a simple answer, straightforward answer like this one merits five points. Okay. According to Justice Dionan in one of his tweets, plain English matters. Direct, no flourishes, no abbreviations either. Simple but not simplistic. Huwag kayo mag-abbreviate. Hindi na nga kayo magsusulat. Magta-type na nga lang kayo. <laughs> Even dun sa dating handwritten na examination, abbreviation is a no-no. Ah, yung mga contractions and abbreviations. Unless the question itself provided for abbreviations. Okay. Kung wala yan sa question, you must complete the words. Okay. Simple but not simplistic. Don't use 40 words when you can do it in 8 to 10 in a sentence. Lawyers need to be clear, not wordy. Help your client understand. Don't just impress. Having said that, it is the substance that matters. But why make it harder for yourself? Real experts answer more clearly, more directly. Okay. So take note, uh, substance matters, plain English, straightforward answers, no flourishes, okay. clear and concise. Okay. So I try to check uh, my the questions when I took the bar examinations. Actually, karamihan sa mga questions sa bar examinations, past bar examinations, hindi straightforward. So, naghanap pa ako ng straightforward. Okay? Nakakita naman ako ng mga straightforward questions. And I will also share with you my answers. Okay? Some, some me, uh, can still be improved okay? based on the suggestions of Justice Dionian. Okay, so itong sample, Stevie was born blind. He went to, the sc to school for blind and learn to read in real language. He speaks English fluently. Can he act as a witness to a will? This is a straightforward question. Ah, hindi ka na magahanap ng <laughs> ano bang issue dyan, ano bang relevant dyan. Eh? So here is a straightforward answer as well. No, he cannot act as a witness. Law provides that a witness must not be blind, deaf, or dumb. His blindness renders him disqualified. Ah? Pwede mo pang ma mapaikli yan by deleting uh, the last sentence. <laughs> because uh, the first two sentences are already enough to get a grade of five. Okay? According to Justice Leonin, it's the substance that matters. Okay? So kung nandiyan naman yan, yung last sentence yan, I think this will still get a grade of five. Okay? So sabi nang naman ni Justice Yonen, why make it difficult? Okay? Save time. If you can <clears throat> answer uh, in a concise manner, so pwede namang hindi nakasama yung iba pa. Yeah. Another example of a straightforward question, I found uh, one in criminal law. Francis and Joanne were sweethearts, but their parents had, had objected to their relationship because they were first cousins. They forged a pact in writing to commit suicide. The agreement was shoot each other in the head, which they did. Joan died. Due to medical assistance, Francis survived. Is Francis criminally liable for the death of Joan? Okay, this is a straightforward question as well. Okay, requiring a straightforward answer. This is how I answered it. Yes, Francis is liable for the death of Joanne. Francis committed the crime of giving assistance to suicide. Under the law, a person who shall assist another to commit suicide to the extent of doing the killing himself shall be liable for the death of the person assisted. Well, this answer of mine is already straightforward, but it can still be improved. You can delete that part. Pwede nang yes, Francis committed the crime of giving assistance to suicide. Under the law, Okay, so on a legal basis. That's it. Okay, that kind of answer deserves five points. Another question, a straightforward question that I found in legal ethics. State with a brief explanation whether the judge concerned may be sanctioned for the conduct stated below. 
refusing to inhibit himself, although one of the lawyers in the case is his second cousin. <clears throat> Straightforward question. Yeah? So this is my answer. No, the judge may exercise his right to take cognizance of the case, the prohibition provided by the rules as a ground for mandatory inhibition is relationship within the fourth civil degree with the counsel. A second cousin is within the fifth civil degree. This, this, this was my answer uh, in the 2008 bar examination, but this can be improved by removing uh, uh, those words in my first sentence. Eh, kasi surplusage. <laughs> so, pwede no, eh, period, the prohibition under the rules uh, as a ground for mandatory inhibition is relationship within the fourth civil degree. And lastly, okay, I found this question, straightforward questions in mercantile law. Is Cruz subscribed to 100 shares of stock of JP Development Corporation, which has a par value of one peso per share. He paid 25,000 and promised to pay the balance before December 31, 2008. JP Development Corporation declared a cash dividend on October 15, 2008, payable on December 1, 2008. For how many shares is eight Ace Cruz entitled to be paid cash dividends. Explain. And letter B. So, sa, ex sa bar exam this year, wala namang sub-question. So, anyways. So, letter B. On December 1, 2008, can Ace Cruz compel JP Development Corporation to issue to him the stock certificate corresponding to the 20 5,000 pesos paid by him, okay? These questions are straightforward uh, questions, okay? Requiring straightforward answers. So how did I answer these questions? Okay, for letter A, Ace Cruz is entitled to receive cash dividends for all his subscribed shares of stock. His shares, although partially unpaid, are not yet delinquent, hence entitled to receive the cash dividends due. Straightforward answer. Okay? So may response to the question and a legal basis. Letter B, no Ace Cruz cannot compel the corporation to issue stock state stock certificate. The subscribed shares of stocks are considered indivisible, such that a certificate of stock cannot be issued unless the same has been fully paid. Straightforward answer to a straightforward question. Okay? So if you can answer this way uh, in the 2020-2021 bar examinations, your answers will merit five points. You only need a total weighted score of 75%. Expect only 15 to 18 questions with no sub-questions. Okay? Kung tutuusin, uh, ayaw kong sabihin na mas madali yung exam compared to other examinations. But this examination uh, will give you a fair chance uh, of becoming a lawyer because you will not, uh, your handwriting will no longer be a factor in giving you grades. Besides, uh, ang gusto lang na sagot would be an answer which presents a correct legal conclusion and collect correct legal basis. Eh? Kahit may minimal grammatical errors that will not be taken against the examinee. The examinee will be given a grade of five for each question for as long as the answer uh, is correct with correct legal basis and was uh, written uh, in a coherent and concise and clear manner. At Justice Dionin in uh, July 30, uh, ito yung tweet niya doon, Okay. Almost every successful person begins with two beliefs. The future can be better than the present, and I have the power to make it so. Okay. So, uh, sabi niya, best bar ever, just saying. Okay. This is a message, his message to all of you 
who will be taking this year's bar examination. Believe, huh? believe that the future can be better than your present and that you have the power to make it so. Okay? So believe that you can do it. Oo na, huh? sabihin niyo sa bar examination, sasagutin na kita. Thank you very much. And that ends my lecture for today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Attorney. To our viewers here, I hope you learn a thing or two that is the most practical advice that, in fact, I believe, Attorney, na kahit yung mga law students would can actually start practicing that in our quizzes and exams. Yes, yes. Would yes. you agree with me, Attorney? Yes, you should start uh, uh, practicing that so that you can also, you, your answers will be more clear and coherent. Sabi nga ni Justice Yonin, that's one of the skills that a lawyer must have to be able to communicate his ideas clearly and coherently. Oh, perfect, perfect. Thank you so much, Attorney. So that, that is our OO Sasagutin Nakita. So as Attorney have mentioned, communication clearly is the most important factor for taking this bar. Even naman kahit sa jowa natin, importante nang talaga yung communication na clearly talaga. Di ba, attorney? Ah, mahirap pag sa jowa kasi yung mga babae daw, mahirap mag-communicate ng clearly sa mga jowa. <laughs> <laughs> Or yung mga lalaki, mahirap uh, i-decipher uh, yung message ng mga babae. So, medyo mahirap. Mas madali siguro sagutan yung bar exam, na? <laughs> Oo, oh, kasi may, may 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 pa tayo. Uh, oh, may, may, may point system pa tayo tapos alam pa natin yung metrics kung paano yun. Um, yes. I have a quick question lang if you don't mind me asking. This is a question that I was I asked during the first episode. Uh, you took the bar 2008. You ranked it first place. So quick question lang. Is passing the bar a guarantee that we will get a love life after it? Well, I already have a love life before taking the bar examination. So. <laughs> <laughs> Pero passing the bar examination, well, uh, it depends. No? It's 50-50 pa rin. It's not a guarantee because some guys or some girls... For the guys, I think mas mataas yung probability of getting a job. For the girls, uh, minsan kasi yung mga lalaki mas natatakot na kapag lawyer na yung babae. <laughs> So nakakagwapo pala pag uh, attorney na yung pangalan namin. Uh, kasi iba gusto ng financial stability. Eh. So they think that uh, a lawyer for a husband <laughs> could oh, provide nga, no? financial stability. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, okay. That's an interesting one. So we have a few minutes here. Okay. Uh, I am inviting our uh, Facebook viewers. We have, let me check here. Wow, there's a lot. It's almost 500. We have like 500 viewers all over the Philippines who are watching us. If you have any question, you could, it could be like a practical question to attorney. Just give me a comment right here and I'll be reading that. Um, let me try to read a few of these comments. We have here, uh, thank you very much, Paz and attorney Judy Labizibal. This is a truly a great help for uh, organizing this effectively for the 2021 bar exams. I have studied well. May God be all the glory. Um, any questions, guys? Feel free. We still have a few minutes. And also, to those, we have here 500 viewers. A lot of people have shared this video. Let me know kung saan law school kayo para mabati ko kayo. And let me check. Uh, oh, by the way, September, that's next week, we will be having Caso Discurso. Uh, October, we will be discussing frequently asked topics. So make sure to drop by every Monday. That's 2 p.m. Again, we are doing this for uh, the Bar Ops Filipinas 2021 for our bar takers, baristas. And even to our law students, these series of episodes is dedicated to you guys. So in return, we just want this one to be shared and you know tag your friends because anyhow, we would like 
the legal justice talaga to be really spread out in this digital platform. So in order for us to do it, um, we will be needing your participation. Like, share our official Facebook page. Let me check lang kahit konti. Um, PUP College, SLU Baguio, San Sebastian College, Recoletos, Bravo, Baste. PUP, FEU, FINMA, University of Pangasinan. Attorney Judy, do you recommend to go bar Q&A right now po? I mean, considering it's 69 days before the exam. So this is the question, attorney from Tony Parado. Do you recommend to go bar question and answer? Bar oh. question and answer? Well, that's part of uh, preparing for the bar examination. Sometimes uh, after reading uh, for a specific, a particular subject, uh, you will have to test your um, retention, diba? if you were able to retain something from what you've learned. Oh. So, the bar q and is uh, a good... Uh, you, you can do that now. So, hindi naman siya masama. In fact, sinire-recommend ko talaga yan para rin masanay ka na on how to think quickly and to formulate your answers uh, in accordance with what is expected from you based on the policy guideline as provided by the Supreme Court. Oh, yun. Uh, thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you, attorney. How about we have a question uh, from Imari Joy. Attorney, may I know po your study habit during the bar review? Thank you po. Okay, sa so bar review kasi ako nagde-devote talaga ako ng um, maghapon ko in study. Uh, but I also make, uh, make it a point na once I feel tired, I take breaks. So pag pagod na, inaantok na, I sleep. Okay. Kasi depende yan sa bio-rhythm niyo. Okay. So what may be effective for me may not be effective for you. So what's important is that you will devote uh, your 100%. Okay. Kung anong kaya nyo i-devote now, huwag niyong panghinayangan because uh, bar examination really requires um, good preparation. So sa study habit ko kasi baka hindi tayo pareho. Pero ako pagkagising ko, I just... In routine, just take uh, your breakfast, then start reading, then take a break, read again. Uh, so, yun ang ginagawa ko. Uh, tapos, uh, naka-allocate na yan. How many hours do, do I have this week or this day? How many hours do I have uh, that I can use for reading? Then I will do spend that for reading instead of uh, browsing my Facebook account or instead of uh, watching Netflix. Okay lang yun during breaks. Yung nire-reward mo yung self mo because uh, you've spent uh, time um, reviewing for the bar. Pero yung uh, ipaprioritize mo yung uh, other things uh, over your study, huwag naman. Because bar exam really requires uh, full time. Uh, Full time. It's a full time job. Na it's a full time job. Na wala namang bayad. Kaya yung bayad nand after na. Once you pass the bar examination, you will reap the benefit of your sacrifices during bar exam preparation. Ah, yun na, yun na, yun yung sagot niya, attorney. Thank you, attorney. Ah, meron dito Nor Laila Kunson Guru. Thank you so much po, attorney. Hindi pa po ako law student, so probably senior high to. Pero interested na ako at nag-attend ako ng mga ganito para maka-inspire po. Thank you, thank you. Oh, wow! Even mm, sana, ito, no? sana ituloy uh, niya ang pagpasok sa law school. Uh, we have here one of the question from one of our active participants, attorney. Uh, I've seen him since the first day of this uh, series. Bruno Rubio Jr. Attorney, Uh, please give us naman po suggested bar review materials considering the present bar trend. Nako. <laughs> uh, punta kayo sa Rex Bookstore. Maraming yes. <laughs> I would recommend. So again, guys, this event is brought to you by Rex Bookstore. <laughs> and of I think the best material would be Rex Bookstore. <laughs> Ay, important kasi ang bar, ang, ang Supreme Court naman may bar, bar syllabus. So, ang important lang is you have uh, enough uh, 
law books uh, that can be used as reference uh, covering all of the topics in the bar syllabus. So ang Rex Bookstore, marami naman silang updated review materials that you can use. So as to which uh, one is better or the best, uh, mas magandang tingnan nyo na lang ah, at i-compare nyo yung mga materials. Those materials are all good. Uh, they all came from uh, the best authors. Okay? Pero as to whether the presentation will be effective for you, uh, it's for you to decide. So kailangan tingnan nyo talaga. Kaya ako nung nag-prepare nag, ano, nag, ako for the bar and I need new books, ako mismo talaga yung tumitingin ng libro and I will compare. Kasi maraming available books pero may mga books na hindi talaga meant for you. Kumbaga, hindi siya presented in a manner that you can easily understand. But there are books na same naman yung dinidiscuss pero yung presentation as my suited for you. So you can uh, judge uh, by checking the books uh -oh. and comparing those. Yun, yun. Pero best option talaga yung Rex Bookstore. <laughs> this portion is brought to you by Rex Bookstore. <laughs> so ayan, ayan. Um, again, guys, to our viewers here, we still have around 500 plus viewers. Nag oh, nagstay po sila ha? Ga hang galing po ng 2 p.m. hanggang ngayon. Thank you so much. We have your Holy Name University po ng Bohol. Thank you. USPF Cebu. Thank you. Guys, let me know from, from what school are you para ma-acknowledge you kayo. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, of course, U class, University of Cebu Law Student Society. Hi. Good afternoon, Johnson. Good afternoon sa iyo. Holy Name University po ng Bohol. Oh, we have here a question. Um, attorney, good afternoon po. Any tips, mga ritual nyo po ang ginawa, uh, mga unstated practices po to easily retain, recall materials that you have read? Baka kumakain po kayo ng kodal or <laughs> baka may mga ritual daw po kayo kasi na natapuan tayo noong 2008. Wala namang ano, top 10 ngayon, so hindi siguro kailangan ng mga ritual. <laughs> pero, pero meron po ba? Meron po ba kayong ritual? Wala naman eh. Actually, nag-aral lang talaga ako. Um, oh. Anong secret? Ang secret? Uh, well, kailangan mag-aral. <laughs> Aral, dasal. Um, may mga notes, nag-notes ako. So I do write down notes. So yung mga natatandaan ko talaga ay yung mga naisulat ko in my own handwriting. So yung, may, yung mga libro ko, may mga drawings yan. So oh. meron, yes. So may, may notebook din ako where I wrote down important notes. Yeah. And uh, most of those notes that I've written down are, uh, were retain <laughs> in my memory. So, when I took the bar examinations, hindi mahirap mag-recall. Pero di ako kumakain ng kodal. Ayun <laughs> na. <laughs> <laughs> oh, try nyo yun. Kasi effective yun. Kapag sinulat nyo, mas madali nyo matatandaan. Nung nagsulat na kayo ng mga love letters, siguro matatandaan nyo. Diba? Instead of oh. just uh, texting or typing. Oh. Write down. Mm -hmm. So, yun. Wala, walang ritual si attorney ha. Pero, Pag gusto niyo kumain ng hard ba na kodal, baka, baka ma, ma, ano kayo, ma, ma exemplary performance kayo, manalaman natin yan. So let us know pag effective. <laughs> A few questions here we have. Uh, Brian Kua, attorney, what can you advise po for us uh, working bar takers? How to balance work and review? Okay, for those who are working, medyo mahirap talaga. <laughs> uh, you have to ask your employer to give you time to study. Kung hindi mabibigyan ng ganyan, medyo, well, kaya pa rin naman pumasa, medyo mas mahirap lang. Kasi unlike others who can devote uh, full time in reviewing, you have to attend to work, attend to family needs, and also review. Okay. Um, siguro ang masasabi ko lang is uh, you have to talk to your employer about your situation. Uh, yun talaga yung best way. Eh? And I'm sure if you are good at your job, your employer will give you some consideration. 
uh, regarding the time uh, of reporting for work and your output. Kung possible nga mag-take ng leave, uh, I highly suggest na mag-leave muna from work. Kung hindi talaga kailangan, eh, uh, extra effort. <laughs> extra effort. So, uh, importante na makover mo lahat ng topics in the syllabus. So, kahit na one reading ka lang, if yung one reading mo naman seryosong one reading, you can still pass the bar examinations. And if uh, given the bar bulletin's uh, statement that uh, questions will be straightforward questions and will simply check the minimum qualifications or minimum knowledge of the law and minimum skills uh, for admission to the bar, so mas mataas ang chance na maka pasa uh, this bar examination. So, tingin ka lang ng consideration sa employer mo because we really need time. This is something na hindi naman mako-cover ma, 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 in just two hours or three hours every day. We really need to spend more time uh, reviewing for the bar. Oh, yun. So, yun yung pinaka-practical advice ni attorney. So, yan. Nasagot na na yan. So, para sa ating mga employed. Um, how about uh, attorney question po, nagre-review ka po ba that day before the exam? A, a day, the day before the examination, hindi ka rin mapapakali eh, na wala kang ginagawa. Kaya ako hindi ako mapakali na wala kang ginagawa kasi I feel guilty. Uh, since I will be taking the bar exam the following day, so uh, I'm, I'm bothered by the fact that I'm resting. So what I did, I just, uh, I have with me yung uh, memory aid and codas. Just to have something uh, that I can spend my time reading. And I also attended uh, two last-minute bar lectures. Uh, pero yun kasi para lang ma-refresh yung memory at hindi ka rin uh, mag-guilty uh, doing nothing. Uh, <laughs> at saka ma, um, sometimes if uh, you did not do anything for the following day's bar examination and tendency you're doubting yourself. Uh, baka, baka makalimutan ko, wala akong alam. So, uh, para mawala na yung mga worries na yon, better just read something. Eh, your notes, um, recent jurisprudence, nabasa mo na before yon. Uh, babasahin mo lang. <laughs> para lang may, uh, may gawin ka while waiting for the following day's examination. Yun, yun. Thank you, thank you, attorney. We also have here uh, viewers from Singapore. Uh, most of them are from Manila, Cebu, and then Mindanao. Comment nyo guys ha, sa unschool kayo para mabati ko kayo. Question here from Sofia Villamer Cardiente. Attorney, what's your best piece of advice po that you can give to the bar takers this year, especially those who are losing the will to continue studying because of the current situation. Um, well, you were able to finish law school. Okay, that's uh, something that not everyone can do. Huh? You have uh, um, accomplished already something. Okay? Um, towards uh, achieving your dream. And uh, if uh, your dream of becoming a lawyer is still there, okay, nandyan pa sa puso at isipan mo, then uh, kahit ganyan yung circumstances ngayon, uh, the reason kung bakit may mga modifications and reforms sa bar examination is also in consideration of uh, the present situation faced by the examinees. So I think if you learn something during your law school, you studied well during law school, you already prepared for the bar, hindi palang sa tingin mo 100%, I do encourage for you to continue uh, kasi itong mga reforms na nasa bar bulletin recently, uh, these reforms uh, would indicate that the Supreme Court really wanted more uh, examinees to pass. Imagine comparing the 
uh, number of questions to pass bar examination questions. Sabi nila, 15 to 18 lang without sub-questions. So kung may substantial knowledge of the loka, kahit yung nakuha mo lang sa law school, I think may fighting chance ka to become a lawyer this year. So grab this opportunity, grab this chance uh, to become a lawyer this year. Kasi we don't know as well what will happen next year. Baka mapospone ulit or baka magkaroon na naman ng mga changes. So if you have the chance now, you have the resources now, you have the time now, take the bar examination. Uh, kung nakapagsimula ka na, i-continue mo na, tapusin mo na. Uh, kasi sayang, uh, you don't know what will happen next year. So ngayon ang opportunity for you to become a lawyer. Grab it. Huwag kang mapahinaan ng loob. Because this reforms, ah, kung babasahin nyo talaga, makikita nyo na with compassion yan. Ah, they really thought about the situation of the examinees. At sabi nila, minimum ah, entry-level qualifications lang ang hahanapin sa inyo. So, if entry-level qualifications, hindi kayo pahihirapang mag-spot ng issue, ipepresent nyo lang that you have knowledge of the law and that you can communicate what you know about the law in answering those questions, you can become a lawyer this year. So, I do encourage for you to continue so that you will uh, be able to achieve your dream this year. So, yun. So, Sa Bisaya Pana Attorney, we call that Padayun. Just continue. Mm -hmm. so, padayun. So I have here a quick question, Attorney, from one of our viewers too. Uh, during your law school po and during your review, do you use a Saturday or a Sunday as a complete day off or a break from studying? I do use my Sunday as complete day off. Eh, kasi uh, until Saturday I have classes eh, and uh, when I was studying in law school I was also a working student so talagang uh, complete rest day uh, during Sunday uh, but if there are assignments that must be submitted uh, on Monday wala tayong choice but to sacrifice uh, uh, some hours of uh, your rest time in order to fulfill the requirements of uh, both work and school. Pero if wala namang assignment talagang 100%, uh, during Sunday, I will devote that for family, uh, for myself. Uh, kasi kung walang rest, uh, hindi ka rin magiging ano, <laughs> effective and productive. Yeah. So talagang you have to, to give yourself uh, a rest day. Yeah. So what I did, I, I devote uh, Sunday as rest day. Yun. So yun guys, yun yung sagot ni attorney. Um, eto naman, attor uh, attorney from Valiant Genesis Albanza. Attorney, best recommended law school po para sa gusto na mag-legal. Uh, sa Cebu ka, University of Cebu, but kung saan ka man, si attorney makasagot dyan. Uh, ano, <laughs> or, I, I, I think no, na the best time, baka kasi senior high pa to or nasa college pa, mm -hmm. Uh, the best time probably is to find out the results for this year because we will find out what's the top law schools uh, talaga. Uh, or no, ikaw, attorney, ano yung sagot mo dito? Best recommended law school. <laughs> Mahirap kasi mag-rank ng law schools, di ba? Kasi ako, syempre, yung mga tinuturuan ko. University of Cebu, suki rin ako mag-lecture sa University of Cebu, di ba? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> Yung mga law schools naman ngayon, uh, kaya nga tayo may Philippine Association of Law Schools. Uh, yung mga din sa law schools, they are communicating with each other uh, para maging mas maganda ang legal education. So, as to which school will be the best for you, siguro kailangan tingnan mo rin yung um, you can do your own research. Eh? Ako, I'm teaching in several law schools and I think they are good. Eh? Uh, when I was uh, about to choose, uh, nung time na gusto ko mag-take uh, ng law, uh, marami din ako kinonsider. Kinonsider ko yung, well, of course, the tuition fee. Kinonsider ko rin yung distance, diba? And yung performance in the past bar examinations. Maybe you can consider those things 
uh, in uh, coming up with a decision uh, kung saan ka mag enroll ng na law school. Okay. Uh, pero, pero ako, I cannot, I cannot give. Kasi kung tatanong niya ako, edi PUP kasi ando si Dean Festin. Or San Sebastian <laughs> because I graduated from San Sebastian. And oh, of course, other law schools where I am teaching. So, medyo may bias kapag ako yung sumagot ng tanong. Okay. Pero you can decide for yourself. Ha? Consider may mga factors na yan. Yung perform sila in the past bar examinations. The distance. Ha? Kung sakali magkaroon na kasi ng face-to-face, then you have to attend classes every evening. Um, evening classes yan. And as well as the, of course, inclusion fee. Afford mo ba? Baka naman di mo afford. Di ba? Kung afford, okay lang. Nang tayo sa pinakamahal. <laughs> Oh, oh, sabi nga dito ni Miss Mora from Facebook Live natin, wala sa law school yan, nasa students yan. Well, uh, totoo diba? uh, uh, Pero, bias talaga ako, University of Cebu. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, attorney, uh, I think this is the last question na lang. So, attorney, Uh, would the preparation po for the bar be the same for a 50-year-old bar taker as compared to those 20s and in their 30s? If not, what extra things would be needed for those in their 50s po? Oh, sabi, wala, wala daw sa edad yan eh. <laughs> oh. Wala naman sa edad. Okay. Or probably sa ano siguro uh, after, sa technical aspects. Um, of, Well, kailangan matuto mo computer. Pero sa tingin ko kasi, kung for as long as kayo mo mag-type sa computer, uh, you can still finish this examination consisting of 15 to 18 questions. Siguro with respect to age, baka ang isip natin mar- marami ng other ano ba to? Um, responsibilities na uh, compared to a 30-year-old uh, bar taker. Um, but it's a matter of uh, time management. and knowing your priorities. If you really want to pass the bar examination, you have to um, set aside other plans. Uh, kaya nga dun sa bar bulletin, ang sinulat din ni Justice Tionen dun, maraming nag-sacrifice because of uh, this bar examination, the delay in the bar examination. Some sacrificed promotion in job, some sacrificed other life-changing um, decisions like uh, Uh, getting married or applying for a good job. So, marami mga sacrifice. So, kung pagdating sa age, hindi ako naniniwala na kapag 50, eh, mahirap nang mag-recall or mag-memorize. Uh, most of our uh, uh, in professors are in their 50s and 60s, but they are okay, di ba? <laughs> Sharp naman sila. So, siguro yung thinking na ay matanda na ako, mahihirapan ako mag-aaral. I don't think so. Sa tingin ko nga, mas... Uh, um, mas mature, di ba? At their 50s, they know uh, uh, meron na silang um, tama maturity level uh, to know what they want and to give, di ba? The uh, time for, for, for review in order to well, achieve, di ba? Uh, what their, their, their dream of uh, becoming a lawyer. So, sa tingin ko, kahit 50-year-old na Pareho lang yan kung mag-aaral ka, katulad ng isang 30-year-old. Yung 30-year-old nga, maraming mga distractions yan eh. Panay gadgets na kasi eh. Pero yung 50, mas madaling mag-focus yan. Mas nakakabasa yan ng mga libro. Yung mga nasa 30s, tamad na magbasa ng libro. Gusto na lang mag-google eh. So may advantage pa rin naman kahit nasa 50s na. And I think pareho lang kayo ng fighting chance na isang 30-year-old. You can still pass the bar examination for as long as you have substantial knowledge of the law. Eh, substantial knowledge of the law and ability to communicate your answers clearly. Oh, so yun, yun guys. Yun yung sagot. Oo, sasagutin na kita. Yan yung sagot ni Attorney Judy. Uh, eto, saan yun? Um, yun. Eto, last question natin. Attorney, do you have any recommendations for training po for preparation of the bar? I I believe this is the preparation, the training that you should be watching. The Bar Ops Philippines 2020 to 2021. I am inviting everyone here. We still have like 300 plus viewers. Every Monday po, 2 p.m., we are live here on Facebook. 
we will be inviting distinguished guests. We started this three weeks ago, and we will continue this event up until September. So I'd like to remind everyone that our next event would be on September Caso Discurso. We'll be talking about probably related cases or landmark cases. October, we will be talking about frequently asked topics. So again, don't forget to like and share our official, official Facebook page at the Philippine Association of Law Schools. And or do you have any personal recommendations attorney, for trainings and seminars and preparation for the bar? Naka, I think naka enroll naman sila sa mga bar review centers. And bar review centers also offer mock bar examinations. So that's one uh, training uh, opportunity uh, for part in answering bar exam questions because uh, their um, mentors will be uh, giving feedbacks on uh, uh, the manner of uh, the, 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 their answers. Okay in, in um, the MACBAR. So that's one uh, training. Uh, other trainings, you just attend the review, uh, read newspapers so that you will be updated with current events and also by reading newspapers, uh, uh, enrich the new vocabulary. So it will also help you in clearly um, communicating your ideas uh, during the bar examinations. So yun, yun guys. Thank you, Attorney. Um, Car Cora here, Munisit. Thank you, Pals, for this from USPF Cebu. God bless po, Attorney. Stay safe po always. Mayong hapon diha, Cora. Um, we also have here City University of Pasay School of Law, MSU Law, North Fairview High School. San Sebastian College, Recoletos College of Law. Good afternoon. University of Cebu. June D. Shello and Jansen. Good afternoon sa inyo. I believe we have covered every question that we have here for our Facebook Live. Your closing statement, Attorney Judy, for our viewers here. We still have 300 plus nationwide po and also from our international viewers. Your closing statement for the Bar of Filipinas 2020-2021, the best bar ever webinar lecture series. Okay, thank you, Rex uh, Bookstore, for uh, inviting me. Thank you, Dean Festin, uh, the current president of Philippine Association of Law Schools. Thank you, everyone, for, for joining us uh, this afternoon, despite your busy schedules. And even though it's holiday, you know, uh, you decided to spend your time listening to this webinar. Now, for those who will be taking the 2020-2021 bar examinations, we will be praying for you. Eh? I, uh, yung, malapit na. Your dream is within your reach. Eh? Do not lose hope on sabi ng the justice beyond you. Believe. Believe that your future can be better and that you have the power to do it. So, uh, Believe that you can pass. Ako, I'm just, uh, even though um, I graduated valedictorian from, uh, from San Sebastian, I still consider myself as just an average uh, examining at that time. Average because you will not be uh, graded based on your academic performance in law school. Hindi naman malalaman ng examiners na valedictorian ka. Hindi rin malalaman ng examiner na tatlong beses mo kinuha yung taxation law review. Okay? So everyone will be graded based on your answers. Uh, your answers in the bar examinations. The examiners do not know you. They do not know that you failed uh, in the bar examinations 10 years ago or last uh, two years ago. They do not know that you're taking the bar examinations for the fourth time. Uh, they do not know that uh, you had difficulty in uh, getting your JD diploma, uh, you even extended your stay in law school, they do not do that. But uh, what they, uh, you can become a lawyer based on your answers in the bar examinations. Yun lang yung magiging basihan nila in grading you. 
and the system of grading is already uh, available, okay? very transparent uh, how the examiners will grade you. Since you already know how they will grade you, you also know what questions will be asked, uh, straightforward questions. You also know what they expect from you, straightforward answers. So, wala nang dahilan pa para kabahan kayo. Wala nang dahilan pa para kabahan kayo. Uh, I hope and pray that most of you will pass. Uh, if not all, at least most of you will pass, 75%. And most uh, will also be able to get uh, the exemplary grade of 85 and above. Kahit wala nang top 10, tama lang naman yan. No? Kasi hindi naman porkit nag-top 1 ako, magaling ako sa iba. Hindi naman ganun. Okay? So, pero still, try, di ba, give your best to get a grade of 85 and above. Uh, in my uh, bar methods book, ang sinasabi ko nga, aim for 100%. Kung 75 points yan, aim to get a grade of 75 points. Uh, kasi that's the only way that you can easily, uh, uh, mas mataas siya mo to get a passing grade of 75. Kung ang aim mo lang is 75 out of 100, uh, pag nakuha mo, 50 lang. <laughs> because your, uh, uh, your, your aim is only 75. So there you, you have, uh, you are, um, you will be graded only based on your performance in the bar. Okay? So lahat kayo equal footing. Uh, you can be one of the exemplary uh, uh, examinees, uh, getting a grade of 85 and above. So lahat yan, possible mangyari. So kung ako nga naging top one, you can also become one of those exemplary uh, examinees who can get a grade of 85 and above. So just pray, do your part. After doing your part, giving your best, then let God do the rest. Just pray. If it's your time to become a lawyer, you prove that you are worthy to become a lawyer, then you will become a lawyer. This 2020-2021 bar examinations. So, ayun guys. Nasagot na ni Attorney Judy Oo, sasagutin kita. Thank you so much, Attorney Judy, for gracing this event. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I may now present to you the Certificate of Appreciation. Technical team, please. Sir... Rex Bookstore and Philippine Association of Law Schools in collaboration with Rex Education and Educampion awards this Certificate of Appreciation to Attorney Judy Almanza Lardizabal for sharing her expertise as a resource speaker on Bar Ops Filipinas 2020-2021, to the best bar ever. Webinar lecture series given this 30th day of August in the year of our Lord, 2021. Signed by Dean Castillo. Attorney, thank you, thank you, thank you. To our viewers, 500 plus kanina, who stayed with us throughout the whole event, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I hope to see you again in our next seminar. That's on next Monday. We will start now with the uh, landmark cases. So again, I'd like to remind everyone, September, we'll be having Caso Discurso, October discussion on frequently asked question topics. So thank you, everyone. Once again, this has been your boy, John, J-O-H-N, from University of Cebu, together with uh, Attorney Judy Lardizabal. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we're now signing off. Thank you.